now and I'm Luke the Drifter and we're up here in the Barrington Tops with Kato and a few of his mates and um, my mate Jake from Czech Republic and uh, yeah so we're just going to camp the night and have a bit of a poke around. Uh, Jake's got the 73 behind us. So um, yeah, we'll have a good little trip. And um, see what sort of tracks we can come up with. No worries, eh? So we've just pulled up for the night and um, you know we just gotta get, get a little bit of wood. Um, now that's the two things you need, you know, silky big boy and um, a nice axe. Um, these are the new axes we're doing now and um, that's it there. It's called the Holterfors axe from Sweden and we're making uh, a sheath ourselves. I'll show you a bit more about it later but uh, yeah, it's got a beautiful handle. Um, we've put some orange oil on it. It's a special oil, comes from Western Australia. Uh, it's a beautiful smelling orange oil. Um, we make up the sheath ourselves. It's got copper rivets um, around there. And uh, they're hand hammered, drifter um, stamp. And really nice uh, coloured leather too. It's three and a half mil cowhide. Um, that's it there. So we're making those ourselves. And uh, that's a really nice custom made axe sheath. And that's the axe there. They're hand forged in Sweden. Um, we're sharpening uh, that ourselves as well on the grinder. So we've got a special uh, axe and knife uh, grinder which we'll show you. Uh, so these come unfinished and um, basically we prepare the handle, uh, put our own edge on it and hone it as well and make the sheath. So yeah, so um, have a bit of a look around. You know, this sort of country is fairly wet and um, anything on the ground it's going to be pretty much rotted, so we want to find something that's pretty, you know, standing and um, it's going to be still nice and dry. Something like that is ideal. Um, so you can see that uh, the bark's starting to come off, and there's no there's no leaves at all, um, and also small twigs. If they've got small twigs. And any leaves at all, it's just not going to be dry enough. Um, you know, something like that, of course. You know, I mean, if you go up in the bush, you know what's green timber and what's not. Right, but um, it's amazing how many people you see try to cut down green timber, which is a real shame because, you know, it's completely useless to. If we cut that down today, it would take six months to really dry out. 
Uh, another one here. That one there's okay. Although again, you can see the bark coming off. So it'll be fine. Um, now there's very hard wood here in Australia, of course. And you know, if you want to cut down if you want to cut down a green tim a green tree, it's fairly easy with an axe. Um, but the Australian hardwood's very hard and the best thing to do is with a silky saw. So I'll show you that. Now that's a red handled big boy, large teeth. Um, now that's not going to create too many issues. It's only a small tree, so we'll get him through three quarters and just push it over. Alright, you can see how well that silky cuts through that. And again, that's hardwood, uh, nice and dry. That should burn beautifully. Um, it's a handy log there. Um, ideally, we're going to cut this up into lengths about a foot long, and then we can split that as well. Uh, so, it's going to break up a little bit. Now these silkies uh, have got extremely sharp teeth and they can be very dangerous. So putting a little note inside every uh, big boy or every silky saw now just to give you a few tips but you know if you um, if you held the saw like that and it jumps out of the cart particularly when you're starting a cut you might hold it like this if that jumps out and runs along the top of your thumb there you know you'll half cut your thumb off and uh, you know you just get out camping and you, did, you know your kids or someone did that they completely ruin your trip you'd have to go home straight away pretty much so you just be really really careful okay you can use a glove if you want to. The ideal thing is to, you know, you need something to hold it. Maybe your leg or your foot. But just be careful with them. You don't have to cut all the way through. Most of the time, you're just going to cut halfway. But then we can just break it off then. So, what we'll do is cut this up into smaller pieces. Do then break those off. Just cut him a little bit more. Okay, now what we can do then. He splits it up with the axe. Pretty solid base there.
Just gonna bust it off. I'm just going to grab another small tree here as well for the night. Um, let's have a look at that. That's a little one there. It's only about 100 mil diameter. The easiest way to do that is to knock that through there with the silky. Um, I'm just going to show you this axe though and why I really like it. Uh, what it is, it's got a really nice head on it and um, but it's got a longer handle as well, so it's got a 650 mil handle. Now we've been showing some axes before that have got a 500 mil handle, and they're just too short to really get a two-handed swing. But that little bit longer handle um, means that you can get a good two-handed swing, and that makes all the difference for cutting a tree down or for using it. Now because that head is reasonably light, you can still use it one-handed, and um, so it'll do everything a short axe will do, but also can do a lot more. Yeah, I wouldn't say I'm an axeman, um, but you can see what I'm talking about there is having that axe that length means you can get a really nice swing. Now if that was only short axe, you're just really limited to how much of a swing you can get. So that's the halter force axe. You can see the sheath there we're making for it. Slips on beautifully. And, uh, and that's it there. So that's a custom made sheath. You can see it's got the copper rivets on it. Now when I was in America 20 years ago, I did a lot of um, saddlery work, repairing halters and bridles and uh, pack saddles. And we used a lot of these copper rivets. They're very good, but they're a lot of work. It's rare to see an axe sheath these days um, using copper rivets because everyone's got to be you know hammered down by hand um, but they you know I really like them and uh, I love using them they're very strong got a classic look about it and they'll last forever so we're doing that on those also on the back here um, we've got drifter on there we'll have a stamp shortly that'll stamp drifter in there with our logo and we can um, we can uh, stamp in your name there as well if it's a gift to somebody uh, you know, we can easily stamp that name in there. Alright, so that's the Halter Force Axe and the Drifter Sheath. And um, we better get some of this wood cut up and uh, get the fire going. Now the other good thing with a silky saw is you can see there you know, uh, makes a fair mess at the end of the log if you're going to cut it with the axe. Um, very hard to now split that up. Right, eh? You can see the difference. It had a beautiful face there. Now, if we wanted to split that up a bit smaller, which is what you really need to do for the fire pit, I'll show you how good it is. One more of those. Oh yeah, so You can see there the advantage of cutting it through with the silky because now we can uh, you know split that timber. 
Now, timber like this, fairly wavy grain, you can see that it doesn't want to split. Okay. And our Australian hardwoods like that, very hard and can be really difficult to split. The way to do it now is with another log. And you can see how easy that is now. Okay, so once again, you have to get a log that you can get your hand around. If it's too small, it's not going to be enough weight to do anything. And if it's too big, you can't get a good grip on it. So something about that size. You can see how easy that will push through the log. All right, so. For the fire pit now, you can see there, got some really nice bits of kindling or firewood. That's the sort of thing we want too, because even if it's a bit wet on the outside, if it's been raining, that outside's going to be damp and wet. But once we split it up, it's going to be dry on the inside, so that's the other advantage of being able to split it up. And with your axe you can do that. So the idea really is to cut it through with a silky and then split it up with your axe. Audio. Yeah, so this is the Jacaro table we've got. You can see it's around the outside there. And uh, yeah, it really transforms the fire pit and makes it really usable. Uh, we just camped here for the night. And uh, you can see it's so handy to just to be able to put things on. Um, you know, when you're cooking and just bits and pieces. That's really like a small preparation table. Um, yeah, it's really handy. We camped here with uh, some of our mates, um, got little 80 and Brocker, and my mate Jake from Spectre Public. So, yeah, just having a nice night on our own. Here you go, mate. Thank you can niblets on the, on the fire pit. Thank you can't get much better than that. Thanks, Luke. So these are just about done. Um, this is Brock's special deer, which is uh, wedges. Aren't they, mate? Yep. These are beautiful, just cooked in the tray like that. Heap of spices. And um, we've got the half and half going there. And we can whack those chops on in a sec. And cook those. And what else have we got? Some capsicum? Capsicum is coming. Yep. Yeah. So you can just see there, that's what we wanted to show you was that Chicago table makes it really nice to be able to sit around and um, very handy. So no worries.